sum the United States up in a nutshell, ripped off. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation Improvement Act of 1991 and 1992, one of those years had the early resolution clause the early resolution clause meant when banks failed, the money wasn't counted when it left the banks. That is just one small part of the money that's been ripped off, most likely because of um, extortion uh, through uh, corporate incentive to foreign corporations. The amount of money ripped off was probably, I would say, over a 10-year period. From 1991 to 1999-2000, huge amount. In addition, they're probably getting into your computers. The robbery was supposed to have been unobservable. I observed it because I had a ground. I brought a cane with a rubber stopper. I put my hands and feet on it when a commando unit entered. And I was able to see the other bank examiners passing out. And one of the bank examiners had an earache, but he didn't know why. The guard behind him was yelling when I think the guard was killed. Assassin was sitting to my left. The FDIC Improvement Act, 1991-1992, allowed assets to be taken from banks that had failed. And assets were taken from banks that had failed. And um, they weren't counted when they took them from the banks. And they accrued these assets or hoarded these assets in various places. And I was sent to a couple of them, and I was stunned every time I went. It would stun you, and most likely inject you. You don't know if you've been stunned very often. You don't know if you haven't been injected either. But uh, then what they did was, they hoarded all that money up, and they had to get it out. And because it's not counted, um, they just kind of moved around here and there, pretending they were counting it. And I'm not even counting; they weren't counting it for the U.S. government. <laughs> mm. yeah. And then they had to withdraw the money because of the deregulation law, law written in 1999, I guess. Uh, November 12, 1999, that's when the big robbery hit. There were uninventoried assets at a bank near in Roseville, California on 11 11 1999. You turn that around backwards, it was 911 several times. You ain't gonna get no 911 during those robberies. The girl tried to call it, it was sitting to my right. At the, I was sitting in the CEO spot. My boss had put a gun, his finger, or a stun weapon to my back and made me sit in the chair. But I brought my cane so I was able to bypass the being stunned. You're much better to be an electrical engineer than you are to be an accountant. Unfortunately, I was in medicine and uh, I got hurt in another robbery very similar. Stun and inject and erase memory. It's very powerful. The FDIC Improvement Act of 1991 1992 was allegedly written by a guy from Michigan. Now that's important because a guy from Michigan might have incentive to put a law up there that says we're going to put money aside. It's going to be sitting there and whoever can rip it off if you have the right approval and connections. You should have never sent me in a CEO chair because they got me hurt. I want to be compensated workers comp. I think it's only fair I get workers comp. If not, I want some asset forfeiture from some of those uh, crime bosses. They were, they are having no mercy. Stunned, injected, people were being raped and murdered. I was in late suicide. They knocked my memory out. I think they probably did a lobotomy. I think because of microvascularization, meaning I was harmed before I was born, I was able to survive numerous brain strokes and my memory came back after 18 years, 18 years on this robbery. It was a piece of duct tape someone put on my vehicle. I was leaving one day. It was like a mnemonic device. He put it on my vehicle. I was leaving one day. We had been stunned in the parking lot. The guy who put it there had been hauled off in the stun car, I do believe, because I remember someone holding 
what appeared to be a wand to his back or a gun. Basically what they put to my back when they said to sit in the CEO chair. My fake boss. I know it wasn't him. I don't, I don't think it was. Kendall. So they're able to do that early resolution call when the bank fails and take that money. Put it somewhere. Don't count it. Just take it out of the bank. Assets too. Be stunned and injected. Be made to sign things. So how do you know anybody's guilty? I was told the regional director in San Francisco was dirty. That was in um, December 1999. I'd been in Arlington, Virginia. I believe I'd been stunned there. But this man came up in Dulles Airport and told me the boss was dirty. Well, I don't know if I was stunned after that. I remembered it later. And also, I remember how thinking how strange it was. I might have been stunned after he told me. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird? Uh, anyway, the boss, he might say he's dirty, but he might have been stunned and injected and made sign things. We'll do say things with everything. I mean, they could make, they took me shopping and going to try to kill me. Had me buy a bottle of booze. I went and set the office on fire with whatever they put in it, fuel or liquor or whatever. That was on November 13th. I wouldn't set the place on fire. They about killed me that day. I had a brain stroke severe. I was actually coding somewhere between the 12th and 13th. Medical code, because I remember uh, somebody waking me up and they'd cut my throat a little bit. Mm. But... I think it's only fair that uh, workers can't be paid to bank examiners, but after all, uh, I estimate the thievery is probably in $100 billion, maybe $200 billion, and that's basically on uh, $100 billion a year, on 10 years, or $10 billion a year, yeah, on 10 years, so it's probably more, could be 10 times that. I'm so low level, I just like, um, I was hired to basically see if they'd kill me, I guess, or maybe thought I was stupid. I don't know why Sam wasn't put in the CEO chair. He had a lot more experience than me, and he told me the prior boss had been shot in his head. And then Willie told me I was going to be shot. These were FDIC bank examiners. It was 1999, Roseville. Hmm. Willie told me I was going to be shot, but I was actually shocked. I was hit that day, the day he told me, that afternoon. That's when we went to the uh, uninventoried assets bank. And the clerk, we got there, said we got it. She was freaking out. She said, we got a bunch of inventory assets in here. And my boss, fake boss, Kendall, said, I'll take care of it. The woman had a great big ass, kind of Spanish-looking, nice-looking woman. But she was older, probably about 40 to 50. And uh, my uh, the arbitrator for the FDIC, whenever I was being fired on April in April 2000, she looked very much like the woman at that bank. They told me if I didn't drop my EOC complaint, I'd be terminated. I didn't really care because I'd had a brain stroke. I was having a real bad depression. And after being in the military, I'd actually been taught about this. You can, rem you don't remember the studying, really. You don't definitely don't remember the injections. And uh, you might remember the injections, maybe, because I remember one time I was being stunned. I believe I was being injected. But that was in another robbery, a family robbery. My mother had called me to her home. I guess it was my mother. In 1994, the same year my brother Kurt Cobain died. Kurt Cobain, Nirvana. He had a lot more talent. He wasn't a, an abortion survivor or macular, microvascularization like me, I don't guess. My father told me he was my brother. I guess he was my father. <laughs> I found my thrill. Kurt Brown, former FDIC bank examiner, investigative journalist on government crimes. So you're going to have a bizarro day. Wipe out.